ओके वेलकम बैक टू एजू स्किल सो इट इज मेड इजी आवर मिशन इज टू मेक यू फॉल इन लव विद ओवीडी इफ यू आर वाचिंग दिस ऑन YouTube काइंडली कंसीडर सब्सक्राइबिंग द चैनल गिव अस अ थम्स अप इफ यू लाइक आवर वर्क एंड प्लीज शेयर द वीडियो टू अदर्स सो दैट वी रीच आउट टू मैक्सिमम नंबर ऑफ ओईटी एस्पिरेंट्स स्पेशली दोस ऑफ फाइनेंशियली स्ट्रगलिंग टू क्रैक ओईटी एंड दिस इज अ वेरी प्योर फ्री प्लेटफार्म देयर इज नो सॉर्ट ऑफ पेमेंट्स Okay, today we are dealing with the reading part A. Maybe this is a beginner session, but there are advanced students. I'll be teaching a different method, slightly different method. Uh, maybe we'll be going through uh, around ten steps in OAT part A. This is specifically for those who find it very hard to crack and get maximum score in part A. So let's directly go into the thing, and I am sharing my skills. Yes. Today we'll try to go slow, considering those beginners. Others can be patient. So that you learn patience, that's the key for success. And OET 2.0 professional English says the test reading part A. And you know reading part A has four texts: text A, text B, text C, and text D. But then all these four texts have one theme, single theme. And normally there is a sequence, as we said, maybe definition, diagnosis, management, monitoring, or description, diagnosis, treatment, prevention. so there will be some sort of sequence one theme four texts it will be in a logical order and as you know 20 questions you have to complete in 15 minutes but we suggest you to practice to complete in 10 or 12 minutes which you can definitely do and our greatest enemy is time try to defeat every time defeat your greatest enemy It means it's a expeditious or fast reading task you shouldn't be ta taking too much time on each text just glance over we call it the skill to skim we will learn those things as well what is the expected grade band or numerical score its expected age skills is for 50 to 500 if you don't want to score 500 if we give you a concession of 50 at least score 450 you should have this particular target in your mind otherwise you will land in 340 330 320 I've seen hundreds and thousands of people landing in such scores. So always try to practice for 450, so that at least you are somewhere above 400. And reading part A, if you take grade A, well done, 450 to 500. Now, if you have to get a grade A in reading, you have to get minimum 18 out of 20. But we suggest definitely you can go for 20 out of 20, so that even if you miss some uh, answers in part B or C. you can be comfortable with your score greatest mistake targeting the grade b that is the greatest mistake greatest enemy is uh, time and greatest mistake is targeting grade b if you target grade b and ma majority of the students i know thousands of them uh, lose their scores grades because they are targeting b and you will not get b if you are targeting 350 you will be psychologically uh, satisfied and happy uh, okay i got some 30 31 correct i can go for exams but then with all this exam stress and other things you will not be able to score even grade b so always target grade a uh, psychological impact on mind and brain 340 so you score 340 330 320 when you target grade b oet reading part a test 7 now glandular fever okay gland this is the text we are going to deal with today and okay reading part a in 10 minutes that's our target okay when you reach 10 minutes definitely you have 20 right answers you can go for exam So tip one, tip number one, begin with a skim, general idea for questions one to seven. As you glance through, just get a general idea, and I'll tell you what are the things you have to look into. Focus of each text. What does each text uh, focus on? So identify: is it about description, diagnosis, treatment, prevention, or management, uh, definition, whatever. Just focus, understand. As you skim, look at the headings, subheadings. Skim, search for clues. Clues like title, section headings, subheadings, names, numbers, percentage, sequential expressions, frequency expressions, scales, adjectives, negative expressions. These are the clues you can look for, and definitely you will be, have the answers over there. We will be explaining those things in detail. So we have twelve steps to crack reading part A. Step number one: identify four text headings and write down on a piece of paper. First thing, as you take up your reading part A, practice what you have to do. 
you have to identify the four text headings. What are the headings? Then write down on a piece of paper or on your notebook. Understand the relationship and sequence among the four text headings. Now, second step, try to understand, is there a sequence here? First one says description. It explains the disease or the condition. Second one speaks about diagnosis. Okay, something about investigation, all those tests and all things. Third one is treatment. Okay, I know. After diagnosis, we have treatment or what you call medication. Then we have management or here we have prevention. So there is a sequence. Try to understand this particular sequence or relationship. Okay. If you have any doubts, you can definitely mark down the slide name title or the slide number. I will get back to you and explain during Q&A session. Now, third step, six, skim the four text. Highlight the clues. Now you have to skim four text. As I told you, the clues are highlight or circle or underline the title, the section headings, okay? Then you have subheadings sometimes in the same text. With text A, you have one or two subheadings. Then you have names, names of organs, instruments, bacteria, names of some institution, organization, hospital, organs, disease, or whatever, any names, identify them. Then numbers and percentages, identify and highlight numbers and percentages. Sequential expressions, first, second, third, finally, such expressions, and frequency expressions, no? very often, rarely, always, all those uh, frequency expressions. Scale, as you know, scale I will not explain. Now, if you are beginners, definitely we will have details later. Scale means something like all, the, all almost, a majority, many, a uh, few, few, all those things. You can definitely go into the videos in the YouTube, which explains scale. And ninth one is adjectives, you know. Tenth one is uh, negative expressions. You have to, when you skim the four text, skim means just pass through, glance through. Highlight the, highlight these clues, whatever you find in the text. We will work it out on one text now. And num uh, step number four, read the question statement, highlight the hedging words. You have to read the question statements now, highlight the hedging words. Five, read the question statement at the text. Question now. Read the question statements and match the text. Where does it happen? In A, B, or C, or D. Sixth step, write down the hedging words identified in the questions. Now we have identified some hedging words, keywords in the questions. Just write down the, write those hedging words, keywords in your notebook. Seventh step, arrange the hedging words into four columns. Four columns means whatever comes under description, you have to put under description, whatever keywords, seem to be under uh, related to diagnosis, you have to uh, write down below diagnosis and third one treatment prevention. So accordingly, you have to make two uh, four columns. Take your notebook and make two four columns and write down those things. And eighth step is confirm uh, one to seven answers. Question one to seven answers is match the headings, just confirm them. Ninth one is locate the answers for uh, eight to 20 questions. Tenth step is write the answers in the answer booklet. Eleventh one is proofreading, the very, very important. Usually we make mistakes, spelling mistakes and problems. You sometimes uh, you skip the word to write. So make uh, proofreading is very important. And twelfth is fill the self-assessment form. Write how many, uh, look at the keys. Definitely before that you have to look into the keys and find out your score and the time you have taken and fill in the self-assessment form provided by Edu Skills. Now, the first step, I'm going very slow so that you get it clearly. And if you are really interested to have 20 answers right in 10 minutes or below 10 minutes, you have to be very patient and go through these steps one by one as you practice your Part A. Step one, identify four text headings and write down on a piece of paper, you know. Maybe Garandula Fever has got these headings, description, diagnosis, treatment, prevention. Then step two, understand the relationship and sequence among the four text headings. Now, treatment, prevention, description, diagnosis. I have given four options here. Could you just write down uh, the right option? What could be the order? Here, it, I, I, I have mentioned the treatment first, prevention next, description, diagnosis. Maybe for a while, you can unmute and tell me which one is right. C, D, A, B, B, C, D, A, C, B. Third one. No, fourth one. D. D. Fourth one. C. D. First one. First one. First one is the right one. C. D. A. B. 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 Okay. 
CDAB. You are right. CDAB. Now, okay. Now you have to do this. Okay. Try to do this with your initial practice. When I'm asking you, if you're a beginner, definitely do all these steps. Okay. Write down in zigzag or ask your friend if you have a learning partner, ask her to uh, present these things whenever she comes to or essay reading. Just send me the headings in zigzag in a different order so that you can order it. That's how you can practice. Otherwise, in the text, it will be in order. Okay. Okay, this is the order, you know, the sequence, description, diagnosis, treatment, prevention, you know, from your medical knowledge, this is how it works. Okay, focus on the sequences, description, B, diagnosis, C, treatment, D, prevention. This is very, very important. Unless you focus on this, it will be very challenging and you will not be able to defeat the time. You'll be searching everywhere. Step three, skim the four text and highlight the clues. As I said already, clues are Number one, title. Number two, section headings. Number three, subheadings. Number four, names. Number five, number and numbers and or percentage. Uh, number six, sequential expressions. Number seven, frequency expressions. Number eight, scale. Number nine, adjectives. Number 10, negative expressions. Okay, now let's see. This is the first text. Okay, I can't take too long. That's why I have already highlighted. When you read, you have to see what are the things here. What is this among the clues that you would look for? First highlighted the yellow one. By this. Names. Fifteen by by. This. Yeah, name disease. Yeah, and in the name of a disease. And this is abbreviation here. This is scale here. Mostly, most, majority, many, few, a few. Okay. Then you have number, <laughs> number and percentage. Both you have here. Number and percentage. Now this is from the text. Next one, again, you have number here. Now write down these things in your notebook. And when you find the questions and answers, we will see whether these are the answers. And this must be the answers, I tell you. So it's easy for you to find out the names or abbreviations or, uh, uh, or something like uh, percent and percentage. Here, one more name is here. It is so sometimes called kissing disease. Kissing disease is? A name of a disease or uh, disease is called in that way. So text B, text B, just see diagnosis. As we said, there is a name of your organ, neck, okay, body part. Then you have two to three weeks. Number you have, numbers, two to three weeks. Be mindful when they write single digits, they, they spell out the words. You cannot find two and three number here. And that is the rule. Even when you write single digits, you have to spell out more than uh, when it is double digits or bigger you can write the digits. So here you have adge adjective, debilitating, tiredness and fatigue. Okay, debilitating is the experience explained. That is the adjective being used. Now we are going to third text, treating grand of your treatment. Treating means, treating grand of your means treatment or medication. Now you see what is what are the things here? This is a name of a bacteria. And this is scale, main, subordinate. And you have adjective here, adjective here, plenty and lots. You have a name of a sport so, as well as an adjective. It can be considered an adjective or a name, contact sports, or contact can be a qualifying adjective, whatever. Okay, then you have, what is this? First, you have sequential expression, first and the other, sequential expressions. Fourth, prevention. So what are the things here? Negative expression, no vaccine. And negative expression here again, not necessary. And adjective, good. Adjective, moist environment. And you have scale here, best. These are the clues you have to skim through. You have to find out. And beginners, don't worry. I'll explain to you later in a session or in the Q&A what is scale and other things. If you don't understand, as of now, just understand there are clues of this type. And number four, step on number four, read the question statement and highlight the hedging words. Hedging words means keywords. Now you see, these are the hedging words here. The signs, could you tell me, if you have no distraction at the background, in which paragraph they will speak about signs and symptoms or which context we have four headings, right? Mm -hmm. First one is description, yeah. diagnosis. So you speak about signs and symptoms. Diagnosis. Diagnosis. The first one says the keyword is the signs, symptoms, which means definitely in diagnosis, right? Investigation. And second one, sorry, there is a mistake. Uh, unexpected difficulties that might arise from having glandular fever. Any idea? Unexpected difficulties or complications. 
where do you have in description or diagnosis or medication See. or where do you have unexpected difficulties or problems or complexities it, when treatment. does it happen yes. treatment. Yeah, treatment. treatment yeah it happens during treatment normal common knowledge it is during treatment sometimes unexpected complications happens then you call the doctor right and there are things to be done the time it takes for gandula fever to fully develop yeah. it's speaking about gandula fever to fully develop yeah yeah description how how long it takes and how many people will be affected all these things will be in description way to avoid getting gandula fever prevention 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 okay the ways yeah five the ways gandula fever can be confirmed where do you confirm Investi investigation diagnosis, diagnosis, diagnosis or investigation diagnosis. the ebv virus speaking about the ebv uh, virus explain description description description, description. description. Descri yeah description and the prevalence of glandular fever seven description diagnosis yeah description and the key is wrong okay in this case the key answer key is wrong seventh answer they have said b diagnosis it can never be in diagnosis okay there's a wrong key answer key is wrong the prevalence of glandular fever prevalence means how many percent of people uh, have what is the percentage of people have this uh, glandular fever all those things will definitely come under description so description. easy this is yeah within 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 a minute you can get seven marks cool 70 plus as cool as that now let's go to the this there is no math the text but still you have to practice this way look into 1 to 20 and try to identify where you have it in which uh, text now ebv what does ebv stand for epstein bar virus yeah yeah, yeah description yeah definitely epstein bar yes. virus yes which lymph gland are most likely to be swollen if a person has glandular fever text b diagnosis you have it out we will come back to it don't worry what is the most effective way to stop the spread of glandular fever stop prevent. prevention prevention yes. yes. yeah exactly. what type of what type of sport should not be played for four weeks after having glandular fever treatment prevention 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 prevention, prevention. prevention. Okay, you have it you have it out we'll look into it how many days will person with glandular fever be poorly for means how many days you'll be affected how long you'll be affected description 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 okay 13 sure. which bacteria can sometimes cause a sore throat requiring the glandular fever so you need diagnosis okay yeah yeah 14th one what sort of environment does the abv need to survive outside a human body description 15th one a person with glandular fever experiences debilitating diagnosis diagnosis debilitating irritation of okay. glandular fever yes. is sometimes called we are not confirming now let's see we will come back glandular fever is sometimes called dash description yes. description yes. the eb virus ebv will have infected dash of people by the time they reach adulthood already prevalence we said seventh answer 17th and 7th answer is same a. Yeah. Yeah. A. yeah yeah a. staying away from work or school is dash to stop spreading glandular fever prevention prevention there there is dash to stop people getting glandular fever again stop prevention stop prevention prevent. getting plenty of dash and dash are the best ways to manage glandular fever prevention treatment 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 treatment, treatment. 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 Yes. treatment. so you see immediately you can identify in which paragraph you have the answer yes fifth one read the question statements and match the text now you have to read the question statements and match the text see this is it just write down in front of the question the signs b diagnosis already we said but then you have to go through all these steps okay if you are a beginner definitely take patience and go patience is a key for success don't hurry up don't finish 3 4 5 6 materials every day okay understand and study that's how you develop the skill so first one is diagnosis we already said unexpected difficulties in treatment we already said complications difficulties means complications then uh, the time it takes for gandular fever to fully develop description ways to uh, you are right all, all these uh, cases you are right avoid ways to avoid ways to stop ways to prevent all this prevention and the ways gandular fever can be confirmed diagnosis ebv virus in the description the prevalence of gandular fever description how beautifully within 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 fraction of seconds you can answer 1 to 7 then eighth one a description uh, ninth one 
you know, abbreviations and all those things easily can identify. Name of the organ is there. It is diagnosis, 10th one, prevention, stop the spread, prevent. Those words itself tells you this is the one. And sports should not be played. Treatment, as we said, is right. How many days will person with a glandular fever be poorly for? Diagnosis, okay? Which bacteria? Because of sore throat, so treatment. What sort of environment you have? And uh, debilitating experience. There are experiences debilitating, fatigue and tiredness, something of that sort. It is in diagnosis. Called diagn uh, glandular fever is sometimes called DASH. It is in description. Uh, the BEBRS will have infected dash number of people. So many percent of people. So number. So you have description again. To stop, you have prevention. To stop again in prevention. And treatment, plenty of food or whatever is best way. So adjective and scale used. So match the questions with the text. All this you can match. Now you see, you can also write down like this. Part A, which are the questions? having answer in party A. Already you have identified, bring them together into one place. Now you see text A has uh, answer for three, question number three, question number six, question number seven, question number eight, question number 16, and question number 17. Try to write down these questions in, in the initial stages together in your notebook so that you will understand these keywords and how do they take us to the particular text. So also you can do it for B, same. These are the questions and answers you will find from text B and C. You have these questions and answers and D you have. If you remember in the elimination method, I said normally you have, if there are four texts, normally you have 20 questions, five answers each. Okay. Normally five each. Sometimes it can be in one text four, other text six. So what happens ultimately if you can't, if you don't have time or if you don't understand something as per the elimination method, what you can do? For example, you have got only two or three in uh, D answers. So rest of the two or three just mention D and you have 90% of chances to be correct. Okay. See, the equal proportions will be given. Normally, sometimes one uh, will be four out, uh, instead of uh, five. So the other will be six. Now, don't write whatever you have six answers. So, for example, if you have A option, six answers, whatever you are missing, never write A answer. Okay? Go to the lowest option you have. Just calculate how many answers you have out of 20. And which is the least one? Just write that answer. If you don't understand, I say that's the last resort. Step number six, write down the hedging identified in the questions. Now, you have to write down those hedging words or keywords in the questions. For example, you see this is how you have to collect all the Hedging words, keywords in the questions. Now, next step, arrange the hedging words into four columns. Means you have description, diagnosis, medication, prevention. So you have to arrange into these four columns. Now, those hedging words, keywords are not in order. You have taken one to 20, right? Write down 20 question words. Now, try to analyze and put them into these columns, even without looking at the text. Now, arrange the following into these columns. These are the keywords. You will have to arrange them into proper columns. It's a good exercise for you so that you have four columns and keywords. This all practice for you. See, this is how the keywords will be distributed. Cool. Then eight confirm now answers one to seven. Okay, match the text. Already you have confirmed, already you know those things, but then I am giving it as a step. Ninth step, locate the answers for eight to 20. Tenth step, write the answers in the answer booklet. You know, the booklet will be given. Eleventh one, proofreading. And 12th one, fill the self-assessment form. Proofreading also involves that you check the key answer key and find out your score so that you can fill the self-assessment form. Now you see, locate the answers, so easy. Okay, one to seven, already we have done. Now eight to 14, just check out. These are the keywords, okay? You have abbreviation here. You have name of an organ here. You have a scale here. You four weeks number here. How many days again number? and which bacteria name. If you remember, whatever we have highlighted in four texts, those clues are the answers here. And what sort of environment? Again, you have adjective. What sort of environment? Cold, moist, or hot. All this speaks about an environment and adjective. Okay, 15 to 20, it's an adjective, debilitating, 
and name disease. Gandula fever is sometimes called the kissing disease. The answer is kissing disease. So name is the answer. And you have a number here as the answer, which I violated already in the text. You have a synonym here to stop means to prevent. You have a there is no vaccine to stop something of that negative expression. Stop again prevention and plenty of dash and dash. Okay, are the best ways to manage glandular fever. See what we have highlighted here is see, name, abbreviation, kissing disease. That's the answer. Mostly scale, 90 to 95 number and percentage. That was that's another answer. What does EBV stand for? In the beginning, first sentence you have abbreviation. Immediately, you know, EBV, immediately you can find the answer. It is Epstein bar virus. And the 16th one glandular fever is sometimes called the kissing disease because it is most prevalent among the young people. Instead of young people, they say adults, teenagers and adults. Seventh one, the prevalence of glandular fever is 92. Uh, that is in this paragraph. Seventh one is match the heading. Seventeenth, the EB virus will have infected 90 to 95 percent of people. See the number which we highlighted was the answer. And the time it takes the for glandular fever to fully develop, 30 to 50 days. Already number is the answer. 30 to 50 days. So fully develop the incubation period. Incubation period is the synonymous expression used. Now you see, again, you have these two questions, the signs that someone might have glandular fever and the ways glandular fever can be confirmed in diagnosis, now match the headings. Then you have which lymph gland and you have here, which gland, uh, lymph gland are most likely if a person has glandular fever, usually in the neck, gl lymph gland in the neck. So you have the name of the organ, which is the answer. And how many days will person with glandular fever be poorly for? 14 to 21 days. Again, the days numbers are given. Two to three weeks. Two to three weeks means 14 to 21 days. 14 to 21 days. Here, synonymous expression used is unwell for two to three weeks. Debilitating tiredness and fatigue. A person with a glandular fever experiences debilitating tiredness and fatigue. So, direct answer. So, you have an adjective there. You have an answer there. See the name here. Step up. Which bacteria can sometimes cause a sore throat requiring the glandular fever sufferer? to need antibiotic therapy. Which bacteria? Name of the bacteria is the answer. And the main treatment, the, the scale is there, so you have an answer immediately. Getting plenty of, plenty of adjective is there, rest and drinking, lots of fluids. Again, you have uh, the adjective there. Then you have contact sports, first month. What type of sport should not be played for four weeks? Four weeks means one month, first month, synonymous expression, after having glandular fever, contact. Contact sports, it can be considered a qualifying adjective or as a name of the sports, however you understand, for the purpose of identifying the answer. And this is unexpected difficulties that might arise from having glandular fever. Unexpected difficulties means complications, already we said, it's under treatment. Now, prevention. Prevention, you have, there is vaccine to stop people getting glandular fever. Immediately in the first one, you have negative expression. Then moist environment, you have adjective, what sort of environment? And what is the most effective way to stop the spread of glandular fever? Good hand hygiene is the best, most effective, best way to avoid. Avoid, to stop is the synonymous, to avoid. Not necessary to prevent, you have this. The 18th question, staying away from work or school is not necessary to stop. Negative expression you have, synonyms you have. To prevent, to stop, to avoid, to prevent, to stop, uh, all these are synonymous expressions. So this is the answer key which you have to refer, but this A, seventh one is wrong, okay? That should be A, prevalence. Seventh one should be A. That's a mistake in the answer key. That's it. Thank you so much, Father. Yes, Thank you're you, welcome. Father. God bless yeah. you. God bless uh -huh. you for a Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. God bless you.